Hello world, my name is Dr. Kulmeet Kundas and I'm a primary care physician for the last 25 years. Do you know, if you live in the United States and you are age more than 18, you have 48% chances of being hypertensive. Hypertension is a silent killer. It's a force within and it is of epidemic proportion. Unfortunately, I do not believe we give as much credence this hypertension diagnosis needs. In this video, my goal is to create awareness and educate you regarding everything about hypertension. You will know why you develop hypertension, what are the common reasons for hypertension, what are the stages of hypertension, how we could diagnose hypertension, and what are the treatments and lifestyle changes we could do in order to treat ourselves so that we do not develop any chronic medical complications. Let's understand what blood pressure is or what hypertension is. Take the analogy of our home. In our homes, we have a pump which provides the force to push water through our pipes. We have different taps. Those are equivalent to different organs. We use it and the water gets collected in our sewer system and is circulated back and the cycle keeps on going. In our body, pump is hot. The pipes are our arteries, which are dividing, going all over our house. They are of different sizes and calibers. The different taps, shower heads, and other appliances are different organ systems. And from there, our veins are our sewer system, and which bring back the blood to the heart, pumped into our lungs, and our blood gets circulated again. In this analogy, you see there are four places which we talked about. Your heart pump, your arteries, organs, then veins, and then which is flowing equal to water is your blood or the blood volume. This is the fifth concept. This is very intricately controlled by our brain through two mechanisms, through sympathetic system and parasympathetic system and also through multiple hormones. In order to assess this pressure and volume, our nature has created two kinds of receptors. One are for the pressure, which are in the main arteries which are going to your brain. We call baroreceptors. And the volume and the composition is checked in our kidneys. If our volume drops, kidney produces certain hormones which go and constrict our blood vessels and lead to elevation of the blood pressure. The analogy which I want you to understand, pump, pipes, organs, veins, amount of blood flowing through, heart centers in the brain, acting through autonomic nervous system and through hormones. Let's understand how intricately this thing is involved. Say for example, if for some reason I made you angry and your blood pressure goes up, your battery receptor sends it and send impulses from the brain through our parasympathetic system, which lowers the heart rate and our blood pressure start decreasing when we start calming down. Say for example, that there is a leak in the pipe, which is equivalent to any kind of injury or anything happens in our body where we lose a lot of volume. If we lose a lot of volume, our kidney senses that the volume is decreasing. They produce the strongest vasoconstrictor retention too, which goes and squeezes your blood vessels in an effort to maintain the pressure so that the circulation is maintained. Now let's look at other way. If for some reason your veins or your sewer system is just dilated and it's not pushing the blood back, that will lower your blood pressure. Sometime this compensatory mechanism where we are sensing our pressure and the volume, they work against it. Say for example, if you have unfortunately kidney failure, your kidney is not filtering, you're retaining a lot of salt and water and your blood volume increases and your blood pressure goes up. This blood pressure is a pressure and volume mechanism which is intricately controlled through affecting your heart, your arteries, your veins, blood volume, autonomic nervous system, and hormones. This 
close loop which is feeding back on each other and keeping our blood pressure in a very steady state and for our body organs to work perfectly at blood pressure which they provide an adequate force to the organ so that it could get enough blood and not have any kind of impact from high pressure that blood pressure is usually less than 120 over 80. Most of the time our body try to maintain blood pressure in adults in that range because that is the ideal blood pressure to perfuse the organs without damaging it if for any reason the blood pressure goes up. Then our organ systems have to adjust to high volume and high pressure. Each organ has its own brain or the systems where they control how much pressure and volume is being conducted to that organ and we call it autoregulation. If we have a hypertension, the organ has to deal with the volume and pressure and it will compensate with autoregulation till it can. Once the autoregulation fails, then we start seeing the damage to the organs. Let's start from head to toe. If our brain is kept at a high pressure and volume, then you will see you have a high risk to develop stroke, dementia. You come to the eyes, your arteries in the, your retina, they get affected and you start losing your vision. You are more prone to develop heart attack. In kidneys, you will start losing kidney functions. This blood pressure creates a high pressure environment and under high pressure environment, it is very hard for our body to continuously monitor and control it till we do something about it. Let's understand the stages of hypertension. As I said before, the normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. If your blood pressure goes up, the upper systolic blood pressure up to 30, is still considered normal, but you will say high normal or borderline hypertension. Blood pressure going up more than 130 over 80 is stage one. When it crosses of systolic blood pressure 140 and diastolic blood pressure increases more than 89, we call stage two hypertension. If the blood pressure goes over and above, that will be stage three hypertension. But what is the cutoff point where we all should pay attention and we should cause for a physician help immediately? Anybody who has systolic blood pressure more than 180 and diastolic blood pressure more than 120, if you have any symptoms of headache, dizziness, heart, chest pain, shortness of breath, or any other symptom, you should go and see the emergency room doctor. Otherwise, you reach out to your primary care physician and they will be able to accommodate you and help you on the same day. I think that's very important. I get this question very commonly that at what blood pressure I need to worry. So we worry at every blood pressure, but where it becomes emergency is 180 over 120. That is a real emergency. Now let's talk about how do we diagnose hypertension? That is where the whole problem lies. There is not a one symptoms which can be directly attributed to hypertension. A lot of people complain that once their blood pressure high, they get some heaviness in the head and vague symptoms, but there is no classic symptoms just coming out of hypertension. So that is why it's a silent killer, meaning you may be hypertensive for years and then you may not know it unless you go and get yourself checked. At this day and age, I truly believe every household should have a good blood pressure cuff. The blood pressure cuffs are getting cheaper and they're getting more intuitive. They are coming up with artificial intelligence. They don't let you make a mistake of positioning your arm. It will come up with instruction and it will tell you to keep your arm at a heart level. The chances of error are very low. They take three blood pressure readings one to two minutes apart so that you could average it out. In the United States, most of the people get diagnosed having hypertension when they go and see a physician for annual physical or they have some other medical problem and they go and their office checks the blood pressure and blood pressure is running high, you get diagnosed with hypertension. 
we all need to understand that 48% of United States is hypertensive if you're above the age of 18. Worldwide, there are 1.3 billion of us who have a hypertension. So this is not something which we could play around. It affects every organ system in the body. We must either check ourselves or we should go for routine physicals to see your physician so that you are taken care properly. A lot of now agencies are coming up with guidelines where they encourage you to check your blood pressure home. I would like to you to check or understand like you in, if you go in United States and Walmart and other supermarkets, there are free blood pressure machines and they have a meaning and a purpose. Those machines are very sensitive. Sensitive means those blood pressure machines are there to help you check your blood pressure in your normal environment. And their sensitive means they tend to overread it. If your blood pressure in those machines is normal, chances are your blood pressure is normal. If your blood pressure is high, you must get it confirmed at your doctor's office or you check it at home. Now comes the next question which we have is why we develop hypertension. Not every human being is doomed to develop hypertension, but there are certain things happen as we go through the circle of life or journey of life. We lose elasticities of our blood vessels and our blood vessels are not pliable so that they cannot absorb the pressure which is generated by the heart. As we age, your arteries become a little stiffer and your blood pressure start going up. That's why as we are aging, it is more prudent that your blood pressure check because chances are you being getting hypertension is a lot more high. So get your blood pressure check. That's one of the reasons we call it primary hypertension. In a primary hypertension, what we know is that you have a high blood pressure but we do not have an obvious or clear reason. Let's take your heart, your arteries, your veins, your blood volume, your kidneys, and your autonomic nervous system and your hormones. If there is a problem of any of this thing, which will lead to high blood pressure, we call secondary hypertension. Secondary hypertension means there is a reason which is leading to high blood pressure. For example, let's take a heart. Heart can contribute to your blood pressure by two things. Number one, how much blood is pumping out and also by the, how many beats per minute is pumping. So if there is any disease, say for example, there are some young kids who did recreational drugs or you drank, or there are some medical conditions where the heart rate goes up, your blood pressure will go up. So if there are certain diseases in the heart which will lead to high blood pressure. In the arterial side, anything which will decrease the lumen of the artery will increase the blood pressure and multiple diseases can lead to do that. Say for example, if you develop atherosclerosis or hardening up of your arteries, and if you're developing plaques in your arteries, that can lead to partial blockages in different places and leading to high blood pressure. Now let's go to the vein side. If you have anaphylaxis reaction or you're taking certain medication where your blood vessels or the venous side of your system loses tones and you will have a lot of swelling, but the blood is not pumping and circulating, that can lead to partially you lowering your blood pressure or increasing your blood pressure depending on your condition. If you have some kidney disease, remember kidney is a sensor for how much volume of blood circulating. So if say for example, you have a congestive heart failure or you have a kidney failure or you have liver failure, your body is full of water, but it's seeping out of the circulation and uh, your body senses the volume is low. So it produces a lot of hormones, angiotensin, and that leads to stimulation and production of aldosterone and ADH and those hormones lead to elevation of the blood pressure, retention of salt and water. The same way when the heart muscle is getting dilated, there are two hormones control how much volume is being circulated or how much water and salt body is retaining. 
if you are on any kind of recreation drugs where you are overdriving sympathetic system that will lead to hypertension so that brings to the next question is remember blood pressure is the shearing force within it leads to micro traumas in the inner lining of your arteries which leads to cracks which leads to plaque formation may lead to thrombus formation leads eventually to the organ destruction that's how people with hypertension lose kidney and end up on dialysis or become blind or develop heart attack and stroke so that is the mechanism how this thing works out number 1 let's start with diet in your diet what is important is how much sodium you are taking whatever salt you consume it leads to water retention and that water retention increase to increase blood volume circulating and high blood pressure whatever sodium does opposite is done by potassium the foods which are high in potassium which are green vegetables fruits legumes nuts those work exactly opposite way and your blood volume decreases and your blood pressure gets better exercise it directly lowers your blood pressure so that your blood vessels can accommodate more pressure and you work better do not smoke alcohol is a directly injurious to your blood pressure it increases your blood pressure so there is no science there we all know that we shouldn't do that part certain races and ethnicities are prone to high blood pressure there is nothing we could do that genetics or racial ethnicity that's what you're born with but if you have a good lifestyle you can prevent it then certain medication especially recreational drugs can really lead to high blood pressure in nutshell if you live clean life where you exercise you eat you don't smoke you don't drink you don't do recreational drugs you could beat your genetics you could beat your ethnicity and you could be without any kind of medical problems from hypertension but to complete this video i would like you to understand the medications medications which work on heart we call beta blockers they lower the heart rate then calcium channel blockers some of them lower the heart rate and some of them decreases the contractility of the heart muscle then lot of medications work on the blood vessels they directly increase the diameter of your blood vessels and they work through that mechanism we have very strong medication which works the kidneys and stops the production of hormone angiotensin which leads to production of other kind of hormones there are medications which directly affect our autonomic nervous system we will go through in the next video all medications in detail we will go over all classes of medication and then we could make prudent choices let's summarize a hypertension is a silent killer number 2 with the lifestyle we could control this blood pressure significantly you are not doomed to be hypertensive if you live clean life number 3 take your medication check your blood pressure at home talk to your physician manage your side effect i have created another video how to lower your blood pressure 30 points just by lifestyle i would like you to review it watch it that video that will give you significant insight the importance of lifestyle changes i hope this video was informational Thank you very much for joining in and giving me your time and attention and we will continue to produce more videos on different aspects of hypertension thank you very much